Hmm, get a tragic here and welcome back to Mage Night. But you know what else? Welcome back to 2024. Oh yeah, happy new year. It is uh <laughs> it's crazy to me that it's 2024. I mean that's it seemed like the future. Like I used to watch movies in the 80s like sci-fi movies where the distant crazy future was 2024. It must be crazy. Like I, I can't think about it. What it's be like for my dad is like in his, uh, you know, mid eighties to, uh, <laughs> living in the future, baby. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on. It is now I have, right. So it's Wolfhawk's turn and Wolfhawk is going to just crystallize basically. Now, when I, if I haven't thrown out Crystal, Crystallize is one of those cards that I target for throwing out. But if I haven't thrown it out, I think it's actually best to take blue crystals, right? So if you take a blue crystal and you have Crystallize, it is actually a gold mana crystal because you can use it to power Crystallize and change it into any color. So the blue crystal is actually the best crystal to keep in your inventory if you have crystallized in your deck because anytime you have crystallized it just becomes a uh, a gold mana basically for a card anyway so he's just going to do that end his turn and he will be ending the round next turn okay so that's the end of his turn it's now norwez's turn now what's norwez got he has lots of crystals and he's got uh, lots of stuff here so See if he can do anything with it. Okay, so he's on a village. What have we got here? We need 14 attack or an ice attack. He has no way to make ice attack. He does have this thing, which is ice block. This guy has ice block, ice attack. Can we get there? Uh, so you can move through Mage Knights, even in competitive mode. So that is two and five. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, Tough, the guy who made this mod, when he saw my last video, my, my, I have this terrible problem when I'm playing Mage Knight where I kind of, you know, when I'm calculating move, I calculate the move and then I calculate my cards and then I calculate the move and then I calculate my cards and it, really annoying and I do that in real life too not just it's something about how as soon as I calculate the move I forget it and I can't and I have to recalculate it but he said there's a thing called a resource tracker here which basically if I do one one move what's this V do oh that's extra stuff two move Quite sure how this works. Oh, maybe it's calculating tiles, so we can move. Right, so it's calculating per tile. So if we move one tile away, so we're here. So that's one tile. That's one tile. Oh no, because that's one tile away. I'm not quite sure what move one means, but what it has done is it's calculated shortest distances to places. That's pretty amazing, actually. So we want to get here and it says that's seven and it is seven because it's five to move in and it's two to move in there. That is actually pretty amazing. So if I, if I was here, like say I was where this guy is. If I wanted to move to here, I could go five, six, seven, eight, or I could go, oh wait, let's do it. So if I was here, right, I could go five, six, seven, eight, or I could go five, 10. Now, if I do move one, boom. Oh, wait, it doesn't calculate. Oh, there you go, I've got to press this button to recalculate it. Yeah, see, that's it, that's cool. So it even calculates the shortest distance. So it's saying it's eight to get to there. That is a awesome little uh, tool, man. That is super, super cool. That actually might make me want to use this mod permanently. <laughs> That's probably the best thing about the mod. How do I rip that tracker out and stick it in mind? Basically, I think it's going to have to... 
basically what he's got to do, he's got to be able to rec the, this tracker has to recognize that it's day or night, and then it has to recognize on the tile every single location. Yeah, that tracker is awesome. I wonder what else this all does. What does this V do? Oh, that just adds, oh, just verbose information, I guess that means. Whatever, the point is we are seven. We need seven to get into here and then we need to kill him. So we only need to do six attack, which we can do. And we have a blocker. So we should be, we might be able to do this in one move. Let's see. So we need seven to get in there. Wow, that resource tracker is awesome. Okay, what have we got here? Well, here's the six attack. That's all we need to kill him. We have a white and a blue up here, and we have a gold. We have the block five. And it is only five. So that actually blocks him with a blue. And we have a move of two three, four. Okay, so what we need to do, we need seven move. So that's four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we can do it. So we power, let's use the, the mana draw. That gives us, oh, we've got this crystal thing, which we don't want to use if we can help it. So mana draw gives us two, a blue and a white, and then we have to use a white and a blue. And then we can move this. Okay, so that's what we're doing. That's a recap ski. First, we do the four move and we pay with the blue die, okay? That gives us four move. And then we're using our scout, which gives us another two move. So that's four, five, six. Now we have march forward. Now this normally gives us plus two, but because we've got one guy tapped, it's actually giving us plus one. So that's four, five, six, seven move. And as you can see from this awesome tracker, we need seven to get in here, so bam, we're in. Easy. Now we need five block. Yeah, that's the order. So now we need five blocks, so we do repel ritual. Same as basic effect, but with ice block five. It doesn't matter about all the basic effect. The basic effect allows you to throw away cards to super power to charge this, the repel ritual. But I just use it as a ice block five. It's basically like a more powerful version of the standard block. I think I've even still got the standard block in this deck, or did I throw it out? I might have thrown it out. It's in one of these for sure. There it is. It's a more, it's just a more powerful version of determination. So if you've got a throw out card, you throw out determination and get repel ritual, and it just basically replaces that with a much better version of the card. Anyway, regardless, we have blocked five. This guy is attacking for five ice. That means it is blocked. We don't have to double block it because we're actually blocking with ice. And then I cast mana draw, which lets me take an additional die. We take a white die to power this for three attack and we use a white crystal to power this for three attack. That is six. This guy is dead a rune ski. In turn, bam. Gain sight reward. Now we just took out a mage tower means we can take one of these. So there's a couple of things we have here. One, we have one, two, two tombs left. There's quite a little, there's quite a bit of love still on the board. So there's one, two, three, four sites down here that can be taken, but the tombs get extra points. So this thing here is a maze. It pumps out dragons, so it's pretty harsh to, to get through. Well, you know what, Mr. Tough, since you're the coding master and you put so much effort into it. Like the thing is, look, I don't want to downplay what Tough is doing. 
because it's uh, it's awesome. This mod is awesome. But like any kind of development, it's like how much time you put into it makes it awesome. And I know from his movement tracker, he already knows what every single every single space on this thing is. So why don't you use decals, mate? So when you pop up the thing, you actually still see the tokens on the <laughs> on, on the map, whatever. But the point is that's a they drop dragons. So there's quite a lot of so someone can sit here and kill three dragons. So a lot of people ignore the mazes because the rewards aren't that great. Like if you go into a maze, right, you just get two crystals for level two and you get up to uh, artifact for level three. But every time you do it, you kill a dragon and dragons are worth tons of XP. Like if, so she's at the end, right? If she kills three dragons, she'll be in the lead. So you can sit on one of these locations and just pump out XP. So there's quite a lot of XP still on the board, regardless of these secret terms. I kind of forgot what the whole point of me talking about that was. Oh yeah, that's right. So I actually think that movement is probably pretty powerful at the end of the game here. So I'm going to take the movement for the misform. Oh, mana bolt. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. So that's the end of that. Let's keep going. It is now the witch's turn. And she is on a tomb. Oh, my cat's meowing away. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Cheeky next door neighbor's cat was munching on my cat's brekkie. He wasn't happy. Okay, where was I? The witch's turn. We have Horn of Wrath. We have Improvisation, which I hate. We've got Shield Block, counts twice against shift Swiftness. Now, some people might be wondering what that weird little thing down the bottom is. Remember at the beginning of this, I chose to use like these custom cards that someone had made, like a little expansion. I think they have their own rules, but I couldn't find any rules for it. So I'm not quite sure what that little hourglass is supposed to mean. I don't know. If you block using more points of block than required, reduce the enemy's armor by the excess. So I guess that's just active. I'm not quite sure what that timer means. Maybe it, it takes twice as long. Maybe you have to leave it on. I don't know what that means. Anyway, the point is we have a block against swiftness, which is awesome. We've also got some pretty cool. Yeah, let, let's do, I reckon we can do this. So we've got at least five attack. So let's just attack into here. What have you got for us? Oh, and we have a swiftness monster. It is a manticore. It's got swiftness, poison, and it's got assassination, which doesn't matter because you can't take units. So let's have a look here. Bam. We do not have a blue to power this though. That is unfortunate. So that's block three counts twice against swiftness so basically we now have we've blocked one to one for three so we need another two block because this is double so that's basically block six out of eight so we need another two block let's just see can we kill this we need five there's five attack five bam Bam, that's easy enough. You know what I will do? What I'll do instead is I'll discard my wound. So using invocation, discard a wound and you get a red mana or a black mana. So let's flip that over. So I've discarded a, a wound to pay for that. And then I'll discard another one. So basically, how many cards have I got my deck? I've got four deed deck, four, four cards in my deed deck. This means I'd use every card in my hand and I can only draw up to, I draw up to five. This will probably level me up. Yeah, so I'll draw up to six cards. So that means it doesn't matter if I have that wound in hand. So yeah, we'll do it like this. Okay, to recap, we have attacked. We have, we have to block eight because it is swiftness. This blocks six because it counts twice. Oh, I need two block, not one. Uh, what's this thing? Cloak of Shielding. 
Right, so I have to use I have to use all the cards anyway. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. So block six, seven, eight, that blocks this guy. Then we have siege attack five. And then we have six attack. And that kills this guy. Let's end the turn. Blammo. We get a level up. We have six in hand. We also get a artifact roll. So let's uh, do that. Blammo. We get an artifact. You blam. Ooh. Gain red mana tokens. I reckon we're just going to take the fame. You blonk. And then rewards claimed. Bam. We got a whole hand in in stock. Okay. Now it is the dwarf's turn. He has a pretty good hand. He's got influence. Lots of influence. Where is he? He's on a glade. We want to get there. So let's use the resource tracker. Boom. We need eight to get to the... That is so cool. I can't, you know, you know how I, I'm a little anti-scripted mods, but this particular thing is great. And you know what? I'd love to know how he did this. I'm going to have to go into the code because there's a game I quite like called Hexplore It, basically, which I've been wanting to make a mod for. And it uses lots of hex movement where the, there's all this different terrain. And there's also another one called Jewel of Ages that I've been wanting to make a mod on for ages. This resource tracker thing, if I could copy this, it would make pretty basically any hex game unbelievably easy and awesome to play. I mean, that's the coolest thing I've seen in this mod. Out of all the things in the mod, the move calculator is my favorite bit. My most hated bit is the automatic rolling of the die for the rampage where you, you, don't, you, know, you need your chat, chat window open which covers up screen space. What I'd like that to do is to like zoom to each location and then actually physically roll a dice that you can watch. But anyway, whatever. So the point is we need five, six, seven, eight to get in there, which we definitely can do, right? So we can't do, actually, I don't know what that's doing here. We've got a gold. Healing herbs. Use a common or interactive, use any non-interactive skill. Any of this give us move, influence. Here's a move. Move one, in addition during the night. During the day, you may reveal garrisons. Okay, so if we use this card, that gives us two move because you can use any non-flippable skill twice. So that would be two move, four move, what's this thing say? You know what I'm going to do? Let's do something crazy. We've got a gold mana here. Let's go influence. We'll pay with a white crystal, white uh, mana cube. That is four influence, four, five, six influence. You don't even need to use this. So if I come up here, we do have a monster in a glade, right? Yeah. Nice. Magic familiars. So when we hire this guy, we have to pay a mana token. And then every round, we need to pay another mana token or he disappears. But he's actually quite powerful. He's like five to whatever he want. And he's heal three. That's pretty crazy. But he only costs six. So let's claim him. We're definitely going to get him. Now we're gonna pay this with the gold mana. So influence four, if using during an interaction, then either gain a crystal of any color to your inventory or get a discount of three towards one of the units. We're not gonna take the discount. We're just gonna do threaten. That's four, five, six, which is enough to, oh, let's just check. Oh, wait, it's written here, isn't it? Uh, reputation bonus zero there it's written in the in the little overlay 
So what was I saying? So that's four, five, six, which means we get this guy. We pay with a gold mana. So we're going to put that on. I'm going to put it on, I'll make it a white. So he's going to be here, and he only needs to get into here, which is three move. Uh, she's already on a dungeon, so she's not going to move. So that means we want to get a crystal of any color. We're going to take a red crystal into our inventory. So next round, we pay this guy, and we get a red crystal, which gives him five attack, which he can't take into dungeons anyway, can he? But... Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to do that. I'm still going to take the five attack for next round. So we're using this to gain a crystal, which we're going to pay for this. And we use the gold mana to basically place a white on the familiar. And that's going to be our turn. Let's end that. Remove a wound. Uh, we don't have any in our discard pile, I don't think. Nope. Bam. Okay, we're back to Wolfhawk. And Wolfhawk is just going to declare end of round so this is round three of four that means we have one two more rounds to go so it ends next day so let's uh call end of round it is now no everyone gets one more turn now norwen has a go wow he's got two marches of start resolve and misform he's got a lot of movement so that's five ten ten fifteen or oh, we can use our resource tracker bam 15, there we are, 15 move to get there. Or he could move backwards. I think, see how many uh, score, it's, oh, here we go. So it's actually got a an updated score. So he has greatest knowledge at the moment, dungeons, Greatest dungeon is Yig at eight. This doesn't seem to be calculating the extra dungeon value. So basically Yig and Wolfhawk are gonna get at least two more dungeons. So they're all on plus eight, he's on plus four. So he can't win this dungeon one, but he might be able to reach, he's also already got Greatest con uh, Conqueror. He's only got one artifact. I'm trying to figure out, we've got to start thinking about how to win the game. So basically, I think he wants to get his fame up. He's only at 26 fame. So he can either go up here and try and attack this and get another tomb. I think that's what he's going to do, actually. He's going to go up here, get a tomb, and then he's going to use the underground exploration of the tomb to move all the way back down here somewhere, maybe to here, and start cl and clear out these unexplored sites. So he needs a 5, 10, 15 move. What have we got in our thing? So we have lots of movement, plus we've got stat resolve. Move cost of all terrains, including lakes is two. You cannot enter hills and mountains. Okay, so basically misform turns all of these into four movement, even without powering them. So we can actually create a massive movement here. So we take the gold mana to pay for misform, and then we use mana steel. Let's have a look here. Move three, you may discard any number of cards, including one wound to increase the effect by two. Oh wait, influence three. Maybe, where, where, where am I? I'm on a mage tower. Well, I guess I could get another scout. So I've got a choice here. I can get another scout and get into that slot there. Remember, we don't really use our attacks at the moment. because uh, We don't really use our units because it's dungeon tombs. But that would give us a permanent three move while they're untapped for the whole of the next night. That would be awesome. That would reduce all these at night time to two to enter. Uh, oh, there is this guy. Can we kill him? We need... Oh, we've got no attack at all, do we? Uh, what would we need to get in there? We'd need three, four, five, right? Yeah, we need five to get in there. So we've got four, 
five. That would get us in there. He's got paralyzed though. So we'd need to block and do eight attack. Yeah, so we can't kill him. Yeah, I feel that the best move is still to go to that. Oh, I would, really wouldn't mind getting that plus three movement though. You know what? I'm going to get the plus three movement. Oh, I think that's the wrong move though. Whatever. Let's do, let's do this. So we have stat resolve. We pay with the gold. That gives us three influence, three, four, five influence. This guy costs four. So let's grab him. And we'll have the opportunity to buy something really powerful there next turn because all the gold units are going to come out finally. And we'll also flip that and gain a white crystal and a mana token we won't use. And we never use mana steel in turn. I uh, don't know if that was the right choice, but it's done now. What have we got here? Now he's got a lot of gas in his hand. And he is here. So five to get in there. We have basically no attack. We have got this though. We do have our wound healing. So let's have a look here. We have, is that guy revealed? He is revealed. I'm just gonna grab this so I can keep an eye on it. We need two, we need four block and we need, whoa, we need eight attack. How does petrify affect units again? It just kills it outright, doesn't it? Yeah, a unit gets a wound from paralyzed, it's immediately destroyed. This guy has got physical resistance, that's not gonna help. This guy does have, this. we could just destroy this guy. We don't haven't used him once since we bought him. It's only doing two damage, which would be completely absorbed and he would die, which wouldn't be that bad. We don't really care about that, do we? And then we need to fight back for eight and we've got Three, four, five, six. Let's have a look here. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we do have block five. So block five, that gets rid of him. That gets rid of the attack. And then we have, we need to make eight attack. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and we need five to get in there. So we can only produce four. Yeah, I don't think we can do this. Let me just have a quick think about this and then come back. If you see the cards move around, it's because I'm doing a lot of thinking off screen this time. Uh, four. Okay, we can do this. So I've just worked out how to do this. Let's go through what we do. For starters, let me just put this back up here because of the crazy way the app works. We have five to get in here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, bam. Okay, now, so that's four move using the mana die, uh, the white die, plus mana pool is five. So that's the five movement to get in. This guy attacks us and he's attacking us for ice block two with paralyze, but we actually have a Cloak of Shielding. And now what the Cloak of Shielding does is that once when your hero is about to be wounded, you may ignore one wound and any additional effects of it. So what that means is this guy's only doing two damage if he hits us, right? We have three block, which means we take one wound. So this cancels the wound and cancels Paralyze. So basically... It doesn't matter. We just go, boom, we hit our staff on the ground in front of us and a big blue shield comes around us. Boom, we don't care about that attack. It just bounces off us. Awesome. So that's done. Now we need to produce eight attack because he's got physical resistance. So we tap this guy. That gives us three. We also go 
bam, that gives us two. So that's three, four, five attack. Now using invocation, which you can use every round, we discard a card to get a green or a white mana. So we use this to get a white mana to pay for the ranged attack, which gives us three attack. So that gives us three, four, five, six, seven, eight attack, which is enough to kill this guy. And he is dead. Yablamo. And we get a spell and we are gonna take Mana Bolt, which is awesome. Yablamo. Okay, rewards claimed. What what came out? Restoration. Booyah. And now it's the last turn of the round. It is Yig's turn. He oh, he's got lots of movement this time. So he wants to get here or here. So using the core awesome move thingy, we need eight or thirteen. Let's just check that. Here's a good example. See, it's yeah, so that is 5, 10, 15 if you go this way. But it's 3, 8, 13 if we go, uh, 13 if we go this way. So it calculates the shortest route as well. That is so cool. Anyway, so we need 13 movement or 8 movement. Yeah, 13 or 8 movement. I'm not quite sure what these numbers of the move mean. Anyway, whatever. The point is... Maybe that's how many hexes you're moving. We have a gold in hand. I placed a white crystal, which gives us move five. So we just go five move. Nine move. Uh, let's go 11 move. 12, 13 move. How much did we need again? Leave this on. 13 to get to there. So we have five plus six is 11, 12, 13. Uh, we do have circle of proficiency. Is there a movement thing up here? There is, that can give us two move. So we go bam and grab Hawkeyes. I guess I've got to, press, yeah, I've got to pull it down like this. So that gives us 5, 11, because we're getting double because of concentration, 13, 14, 15 move. Oh, we don't even need that. Hang on, we don't even need this. What am I doing? We only need 13 move, right? 5, what is in the offer for, there's nothing at the monastery. Oh, wait, there's all these spells. Temporal portal. Ooh, that costs six. This gives us five influence. Okay, let's see if we can move, what is it, eight. We should be able to do that. So that's six, seven, eight. So there's the move. Five. Circular protection to get this twice. So we get six, that's six by itself, and that's five, six. So we produce 12. Okay, now, here we go. When you are in a site during an interaction, you can basically, I don't know where it tells you this rule, but I'm sure this is correct. Like say I'm in a monastery and I produce eight influence, I could buy a card and heal twice. Because when you do an interaction, you can buy as many things, do as much as you want in that interaction to spend all your influence. So we've gone six, seven, eight move, which gets us to the monastery. Bam. All right. And then at the monastery, we'll burn it down next turn, but at the monastery, we then spend five influence on our creature plus we use circle of proficiency use any non-interactive skill in, in the common skill offer including your own as if it was your skill if it's not a skill usable each turn as in it does not flip use its effect twice so that gives us six 
So that by itself gives us six. And then we have five, six here. So we've produced 12 influence. And if we look over here, it's six to buy an action card from the offer, from the monastery offer. So we are going to grab Imperial por uh, Temple Portal. And what else have we got here? Or the move cost of all terrains is reduced by one to a minimum of two this turn. Pathfinding, very, very cool. I'm going to take Pathfinding. I'm a big, big believer in uh, movement. And that's our turn. So we'll just put that back. I don't know what happens to it if I leave it there because of the automation. And that is the end of the round. Blammo. Okay, now I'm not going to press the continue button because that'll change it to night time. So, everyone's about to level up and get more action cards. You know, I think she's just going to park on there and kill dragons. So she can kill four dragons by just sitting on that spot. We do have Mana Bolt in hand. <laughs> Ice attack three. We need crystal generation for this though which we have, we do have evocation. Okay, so, well, that's about that. And I will see you guys next time.